So we are beginning a new journey, going through Srimad Bhagavad Gita, very famous, important, influential text. And it's a book that our Guru Dev Shila, Bhakti Sundar, Govind Dev, Sami Maharaj put a lot of importance on. You know, he, you know, he recommended that we read a chapter every day. Um, and, and because Bhagavad Gita, you know, we, we are a little, I, I always think that we are a little spoiled, you know, especially those who have access to the, to the, you know, fine teachings and realizations of our Guru Varga, um, especially what's come from Srila Bhakti Raksha, Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, who is our grandfather Guru, you know, he's, you know, we, we, we hear so many fine um, find expressions and realizations in Krishna consciousness. And sometimes we become a little spoiled by that. And we forget some of the, you know, foundational teachings. And Bhagavad Gita is so helpful in that regard. You know, so many foundational teachings, they are emphasized throughout Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, many of the finer points of Krishna consciousness of bhakti, they are not discussed in Bhagavad Gita. They are discussed in Srimad Bhagavatam. You know? but, but everything in a, you know, a, a, pertaining to the foundation of, bhak, of the practice of bhakti is discussed in, in Bhagavad Gita. And another point is that Bhagavad Gita can be read in different ways. You know, there are different, there are different layers to Bhagavad Gita. And you can, you can read Bhagavad Gita. Um, you know, there are, you know, there, there are more in devotional interpretations which can be drawn from Bhagavad Gita. You know, there's, you know, on one level, you can read this progression in Bhagavad Gita, beginning with Karma Yoga, then going to um, Jnana Yoga, you know, then going to Bhakti Yoga. You can read a, um, you can read, you can follow this progression. And some of, and some of the teachings, they're not directly, they're not so much in line with the cultivation of Bhakti. That's one reading of Bhagavad Gita. But you can also read, our Gurudev pointed out that you can actually read Bhakti um, at every step of Bhagavad Gita, you can see how principles, for, for example, you can see how principles of karma yoga, especially the, the mood of selflessness, how they can be applied, how they have relevance in the cultivation of, of bhakti. Um, and, and there's something, and also, you know, we also want this meeting to be really inclusive. For, for persons who, you know, aren't exactly sure about the, the path of bhakti, we want them to also feel like, you know, there's something for me in this group. You know, we don't we don't want to we don't want to hammer hammer you over the head with with bhakti, you know, with with devotion. You no, know? because Bhagavad Gita is, and this you know, Bhagavad Gita is so well known and it's been appreciated by so many great thinkers in the East and the West, you know, philosophers and writers and scientists um, from all over the world. Um, they have expressed profound appreciation for Bhagavad Gita. No doubt some of you, you can quote many things um, in that regard. Um, so what I'm saying is that Bhagavad Gita is so inclusive. There really is something here for everyone. Um, even if you, even if you're not, a th even if you don't consider yourself to be a theistic person, even if you're not a God believer, so to speak, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is like a practical life manual, you know, simply like, you know, if you, you're looking to live a peaceful life, you know, if you're looking, looking for how this is actually what yoga means, you know, yoga, yoga, yoga can be understood in different ways. The words yoga. Um, one meaning of the word yoga, which is probably um, discussed the most, is that it means union, um, connection. And so then different types of yoga, they indicate different, different paths, different means by which persons can connect, right? So you can connect through your karma, 
you can connect through your activity. Um, you, or jnana yoga, you can connect through the cultivation of knowledge. Um, and then, and then Ashtanga yoga, including the different asanas, the postures, that's also can be included in that line of yoga. Then bhakti yoga, connecting with the divine through devotion, through the heart, right? So this is the primary way in which, um, you know, like in a kind of our common talk, our common parlance, we discuss the word yoga, right? It means union, connection. Um, but but actually, what you see in Bhagavad Gita um, is that you know, frequently, yoga meaning like a means by which we can maintain this this inner peace, this inner equilibrium in the midst of all the flux, in the midst of the hustle and the bustle of daily life, the up and the duality, amidst the duality of daily life. You know, and the you know the the ups and downs and all the cycles that we go through: happiness, sadness, you know, wealth, poverty, friends, enemies. Right? These are all the dualities that we experience in our daily lives. Right? Moment to moment. You know, sometimes it's like that: one moment, one moment we're up, one moment we're down. Right? Because we're so dependent on our environment, we're so affected by our environment. Right? So Bhagavad Gita. It, it gives you know so much advice on how to remain aloof from that, from all that madness of the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, how to remain aloof from that, how to be able to withdraw from, from our dependency on our external environment and, um, and, and feel that inner peace, that inner equilibrium within ourselves. Um, so this is yoga. This is one definition of yoga, which is discussed repeatedly throughout Bhagavad Gita. Um, victory, defeat, happiness, sadness, in the midst of all these dualities, how we can maintain this, this inner space within ourselves. You know? um, so, so, yeah, so I was just, you know, making this point that, you know, you don't need to be an, an you know, an overtly spiritual or religious person, or even a God, you know, a, a God conscious person, you know, but there's something here for you. And, and, um, and then, and so like the first type of yoga, um, which is discussed in Bhagavad Gita is karma yoga, which is so accessible, which is so universal, you know, essentially karma yoga means selfless duty living your life in the spirit of selfless duty whatever your and that's something that anybody can try to practice like whatever your belief system is whether you're a christian or a muslim or you even you know don't identify with any religious you know conception at all you know whatever whatever you identify with anybody can try this at home Try living in this spirit of selfless duty at home and experience the results of that. You know, experience how their their inner world becomes enriched by that. So it's it, it's Bhagavad Gita. It's so valuable, um, so accessible, so universal. Um, so I'd like to begin um, by going through. The, we have an, uh, an introduction here. So this is the edition we're going through. And, uh, you know, there are many editions of Bhagavad Gita. Our, our Guru Dave mentioned um, that this is like in the 19, in the 40s, that when he first joins um, um, his guru's temple in Bengal, that his guru, Shula Sridhar Marj, whose edition this is, um, that, that there were 800 editions of Bhagavad Gita available. You know? And nowadays, I mean, there must be, there must be thousands, you know, there must be thousands of editions of, of Bhagavad Gita. So it's, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a jungle, you know, and I've even heard that there, I've, I've picked up, I, I have some, I've had some impression that there's even something of a fashion um, amongst some persons like, to write your own commentary on Bhagavad Gita, you know, I've I've heard a few 
persons mention that, oh yeah, I'm working on my, my own commentary of Bhagavad Gita, you know. So it's a real jungle out there. And, and then another interesting point here is that Sanskrit is, is very open to interpretation, you know. So it's, it's easy to interpret different phrases in a multitude of different ways. Um, and that, and that, has been, that has been done, you know, and is, is being done. Um, so we, the main two editions that we referenced um, are, this is ours, the hidden treasure of the sweet absolute. This was made by our Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, and his guru, Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Um, and also Swami Maharaj Prabhupada's edition of, of ISKCON. And he, and he calls it Bhagavad Gita as it is. <laughs> or I, I like how they say it in Spanish. Tal como es. Is that? Lalita, is that right? Tal como es? Yeah. Tal, tal como es. I, I, like it, I like it more in Spanish. Tal como as it is, you know. And the idea being that, you know, not as you think it is, or I think, think it is, or that person thinks it is, but as it is. No. Um, okay, I have a request here to say something about myself. Okay, let's do a little sharing at the end. Um, uh, I'd like to mix things up a bit. I, I do like to include, you know, personal element. I want to hear from some of our members, friends in the group too. But let's let's um let's dive in a little to the book first. Um, so, so yeah, because there are so many interpretations um, that go in all kinds of directions, then Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, he published this edition as it is, you know. Um, so, so like, like for example, um, and our Gurudev also mentioned this, um, you know, Krishna mentions many times through Bhagavad Gita, like personal pronouns, like, you know, I, me, you know, and then, there are persons who will interpret that as, as um, you know, like for example, there's the, one of the most famous verses of Bhagavad Gita, Sarvadar Mum Praditya Ja, Mum Ekam, Mum is me. So he's saying, surrender unto me, you know. And then there are persons who will translate that as, surrender unto the unborn Krishna living inside of you, you know. Things like Krishna saying I and me and mine and 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 Krishna and, and there are many interpretations where they'll 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 describe Krishna as you know as an impersonal light, you know, or consciousness, you know, denying that personality, which is so clearly affirmed in, in Bhagavad Gita. Um, so anyway, there are the, the two main editions that we refer to are are this of our Guru Dev. And then Swami Maharaj Prabhupada of, of ISKCON. Um, and, and then there are other editions also um, by other teachers or acharyas, as we say, within our lineage, like Vishwana Chakrati Thakur, Baladevi Jibusham. Um, but mostly the essence of what they've given, you know, that's been included in the commentaries of our more immediate gurus. Um, but those are also valuable if anyone wants to explore further um so um yeah so these are the two editions we'll, we'll that we'll be going we'll be going through primarily this one um and so i would like i think you know our chintamani devi has posted in the chat um a link for anyone who wants to download and um and let's begin with um the the introduction um so, so we are on, so I'm going to read, I'm going to read the, the preface. Um, and this is written by our Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, published 1961. Okay. So preface, unique in its wide publication and extensive circulation. The Srimad Bhagavad Gita appears in various languages, both in India and other countries, along with the commentaries of former great saints as well as modern scholars. 
the commentaries of the prominent Vaishnava Acharyas such as Sri Ramanuja, Sri Madhva Muni, and Sri Sridhar Swamipad are most notable. Um, so let's see, I'm not exactly sure who, if we, maybe we have some friends here who are completely new. I'm not, well, I think everyone here knows, knows what we're talking about. Um, so I won't, I won't go too, too beginner here. Um, so everybody, everybody knows what Vaishnavism is here, I think. Um, so these are prominent commentaries of Vaishnava charges being mentioned here. Whilst amongst the proponents of Jnana Marga or the monistic path, the commentaries, so this is referring to the impersonal um, line of thought. The commentaries of Srimad Shankar Charja and Sri Madhusudan Saraswati are well known. The commentaries of Sri Yuta Bala Gangadhar Tilak and Sri Aurobindo favor the school of karma yoga or the path of action and are also familiar to modern scholars. Great thinkers of both East and West have ardently sung the glories of Sri Gita, being inspired by the ideals of its teachings. However, the Achincha Bed Albed Siddhanta, theology of inconceivable oneness and difference, as revealed by the proponents of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaudiya Acharya Silavishana Chakravarti and Shilabaladevi Jabusham is concluded by the learned devotees to be most favorable to exclusive devotion. The devotees also embrace Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Bengali commentary of Sri Gita as a harmonious spiritual mind of the treasure of divine love for Sri Krishna, Krishna Prema, the fifth and transcendental goal of life beyond the four general human objectives of religion, wealth, sense enjoyment, and liberation. In his introduction, my worshipful divine master, Sri Guru Pada Padma, Om Vishnu Pad, Padamahamsa, Padi Vrajakacharya, Sri Sri Mad Bhakti Raksha, Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj, has revealed to the readers glimpses of his own deep devotional realizations. Although numerous editions of Sri Gita are presently available, few commentaries can be said to nurture pure devotion according to the teachings of bona fide divine succession, which has given us the opportunity of service in producing this edition. We shall consider ourselves blessed if the fortunate readers take the all auspicious essence of this sincere attempt to heart. So, so Shulu, our Guru Dev, um, he's touching on this point here that, you know, we are interested in revelation. You know, we are interested in, in that which is descending. You know? You know, as I mentioned, there are innumerable editions of Bhagavad Gita available, but our Guru Dev is mentioning here, like, you know, editions which, you know, can be considered reliable, you know, are coming from a reliable source and, and coming as a descent, you know, descending from a higher plane of truth. You know, there are a few like that, you know, a few like that to be found. You know, we, with our, you know, with our mental intellectual faculties, empiric faculties, we can all make interpretation, right, of, of various things. And that, that has some value, you know, but what we are really interested in, what can really uplift us, it must descend from a higher plane. You know? the, and, and you know, what is so um, powerful about going through these holy books is that you know, even if we don't understand everything, you know, this, there's a vibration here. You know, our, our, our Guru Dev, he used to say, like, we want to connect with divinity. We need to connect with divinity in the proper channel. You know, so like where, because the Lord likes to appear through particular channels. And, uh, and that means through the hearts of his beloved devotees. The Lord, Krishna, God, the divine, 
likes to manifest in this world through the hearts of those who love him. Let's put it like that. You know? And that has a particular vibration that can purify us, that can uplift us beyond even our own comprehension. You know? Even if, so it's, it's something that's tra that transcends our mental, intellectual, sensory faculties. So even if we're just connecting with the vibration of this holy text, you know, hearing this original vibration, you know, that's going to touch our heart, that's going to touch our soul, you know, that's going to feed us, that's going to nourish the soul body within ourselves. You know? so, so that's why, you know, you know, on some level, you know, we are we're going through this in an intellectual way. We're trying to engage our intellect to strengthen our faith. But what we're but what's happening on a deeper level is that we are submissively connecting with this divine vibration. We are inviting this divine vibration to wash over us and to purify us and to take us up to a higher sphere of reality. So it's an exciting journey. You know, and, and our and our Guru Dave, our Guru Dave, he translated Bhagavad Gita from Sanskrit to Bengali. He's been reading Bhagavad Gita, you know, was reading practically every day. He reads something for his whole life. But he would say, still, I'm getting new light from Bhagavad Gita. You know, still something fresh is coming every time I open the pages. So, you know, we're not here. In other words, we're not here to enter into an academic exercise. But, you know, that's not what this is about, you know, but we're connecting with this divine flow that's coming down and we're open to the possibilities. Shila Shidamari says in one place, open your heart wide and see how will that, that wave come down and touch your heart and move you. Like, let's be ready for that. Let's be ready to be swept up in the waves of Shima Bhagavad Gita. So it's, it's, it's a journey. Um, and and I, I'm excited to be here with, with all of you. We can participate in this journey together. Um, let me see. I, I, am, I am going to read through this short introduction too. And then after that, it would be nice to have some engagement um, with our beautiful group here. So, uh, so yeah, so just bear with us. So, so I'm now going to go through this introduction, which was composed by Bhakti Dakshak Sridhar, um, who is the author of this edition. And this begins with Srila Sridhar Maharaj's original verse um, in glorification of Gita. Vande Shri Guru Gorango Radha Govinda Sundaro Saguna Giyate Chata Gita Gudarta Gauravam. Bowing down to the holy feet of Shri Guru, Shri Goranga, and Shri Shri Radha Govinda Sundar, all accompanied by their associates, I sing the glories of the hidden treasure of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Gita Gudarta. Um, so I'll, I'll just briefly mention here this, because this is in our title, Hidden Treasure. Um, and so this is referring to the wealth of bhakti, the wealth of devotion, because we see this as a hidden treasure of the Vedic presentation. The, the Vedas, they present many different conceptions. They're accommodating persons of many different mentalities and aspirations and in that sense, it's a bit of a jungle, you know, and, and often different, you know, Vedic lines of thought are contradicting one another. So it's kind of like you're, you're getting through a jungle, cutting away the undergrowth, you know, getting to that hidden treasure, that, that hidden temple um, where this golden, this golden treasure is. And that treasure is bhakti, you know, that treasure is devotion. This is the real gift of the Veda. Um, and the real gift of Bhagavad Gita, you know, one, one, in, one interesting point about Bhagavad Gita is that it, in, in, I think of it as kind of like a concise um, summary of, of all of the Vedic um, teachings. 
on a, on a higher level, you know, for, for those who are sincerely aspiring for a higher life. Um, there are other sections of the Vedas which are catering to persons who aren't interested in enlightenment. But for those who are interested in enlightenment, um, to some degree or another, like all of these lines of thought are concisely presented um, in Bhagavad Gita. And, and so, so then also within Bhagavad Gita, that there are these different lines of thought and different paths which are discussed and explored. But the treasure, and it's a little hidden, is that of bhakti. You know? So that's being highlighted in this beautiful title um, from Srila Sridhar Maharaj, the hidden treasure of the sweet absolute. The absolute is referring to God, the divine, but what is the nature of that absolute? It is sweet. This is the Krishna conception, the sweet, playful God. And then the, what is the hidden treasure here? That is bhakti, devotion. So how we can connect with that sweet absolute through a relationship of love. So Gita Gudarta, um, Guda. Guda means what is hidden. So the hidden um, treasure of Gita. That's what is being emphasized in this edition of Bhagavad Gita. So you don't, you know, all the, all the work of cutting through the undergrowth in the jungle, it's been done for us, you know. And the sweet essence, the sweet treasure is being given to us. Um, there's one, actually, there's one commentary of one Bhagavad Gita scholar um, in India that our, our Gurudev liked very much. He made this one line. I'm in reference to one of the verses in Bhagavad Gita that here we're being given nectar on a golden plate. <laughs> nectar on a golden plate. You know, like it's it's all, it's just right in front of you. The fruit's ready, it's been peeled, it's been cleaned, it's been chopped in nice bite-sized pieces, you know, just there for you to swallow up, you know, and enjoy to your heart's satisfaction. So let's just read through this. Since Srimad Bhagavad Gita is very familiar to the learned society, an acquaintance of the conceptions of this edition may be given here. We are followers of the school of thought descending from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this edition is based on the Sri Gita commentaries of the preeminent exalted Sri Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya, Sri Vishwanath, Sri Baladev, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. By the grace of our worshipful spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Stanta, Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, and from indications in the commentaries given by the aforementioned great pure devotees, in places some new light has been shed, revealing deeper meanings. The devoted reader will appreciate this particularly with regard to the four verses chapter 10, verses 8 to 11, which were described by Sri Vishwanath Pad as the four essential verses, Chatu Shloki of the book. Generally, Sri Gita is known as an excellent study of the science of religion. The language of Sri Gita is simple and sweet. Its mood is grave, extensive, and radical. Its thought is succinct, lucid, and impartial, and its logic is sound and natural. The eloquence of the prologue, epilogue, exposition, review, analysis, synthesis, and delivery of Sri Gita is unprecedented and charming in the extreme. Now, listen to this line. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Sri Gita is activation for the lazy. This, we can put this on a poster. Sri Gita is activation for the lazy, courage for the fearful, hope for the hopeless, and new life for the dying. Sri Gita unifies and sustains all ranks. Whether revolutionary, occultist, optimist, renunciationist, liberationist, and or full-fledged theist. From the atheist of grossly crude vision to the most elevated saint, 
The essential conceptions of all classes of philosopher are illustrated with clear and powerful logic. The devotees of the Lord, Bhagavad Bhaktas, and persons on the paths of action, knowledge, and yoga, karmis, jnanis, and yogis, will each find the essence of their paths dealt with in a comprehensive and illuminating manner. And thus the book is highly esteemed by all. The essential and inner purport of the Vedas and Upanishads of the Aryans is directly explained. And the essence of, not, of various non-Aryan doctrines can also be found. And I'll just add here, I mean, I think most of you are aware of this, but um, uh, Aryan, so Hit, Hitler, um, Hitler stole that, you know, this is <laughs> Aryan, originally Aryan refers to a, a noble person, um, someone who is, you know, a righteous follower of the Vedas. No doubt there's more, um, more, you know, better explanation that can be given, but essentially this is what Aryan means um, in its original Vedic context, an upright follower of the Vedic teachings. Um, and, uh, and so Hitler, he stole that, you know, along with other things, um, the swastika, um, he spoiled the swastika also. Um, so in case anyone was a bit thrown by that, um, yeah, that, that was, that was the Vedic, that was the Vedic property, um, originally. Um, Sri Gita teaches us enlightenment through the selfless execution of scripturally ordained actions. When the consciousness is thus purified, self-realization or spiritual realization is attained. Yeah, thank you, Chintamani. I was trying to remember, Chintamani just added in our class. I was trying to remember the right expression, misappropriation. That's it, I was trying to remember. He misappropriated. Um, he culturally misappropriated um, the Vedic wealth. Um, and, and actually, you know, and I was discussing this point with um, Ganga Leela, who's with us here, our hostess, one of our hostesses here today. She, because she's from Germany, and there's a really deep relationship between Germany and India. And there's a whole history, you know, for centuries before um, Hitler, don't even like to say his name, um, H. Um, there's a whole history be, uh, relationship between India of, of German appreciation for the wealth of India. You know, many philosophers and scholars, um, through you know, throughout the centuries, they have expressed deep appreciation. Um, you know, there are some really strong statements at some very prominent, um, res respected German philosophers. Like you won't, you know, nothing. Um, Nothing compares to the to the depth of uh, of the knowledge that is that is presented in the Vedas. So these kinds of statements. Um, so there's there's a deep and actually even today, I read recently in an article there are 14 universities in Germany that study Sanskrit. Um, and, you know, compared to for example England, there's like four. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's, um, there's, there's, a, there's a history. And we have a comment here, German language is derived from, from Sanskrit. I mean, you know, our, we, you know, our gurus also will say that Sanskrit is the mother of, of all languages. But yes, um, some are more closely connected. Um, and Marie also has another comment on the linguistics here. Okay, we've got a lot, of, a lot of interesting comments popping up here. I, you know, I, I'm I'm on my phone, unfortunately, because I long story, but I I I ended up getting a new computer gifted to me yesterday because my other one was broken, and so I haven't not set up with Zoom, so I can't read everybody's comments, unfortunately. But there's a lot of nice comments here for those who are able to see them easily. Interesting comments. Um. So um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more that can be said about that, but um, maybe we won't we won't um go off track too much. <laughs> I'll I'll go back here, um, to our introduction from the standpoint of some. I'm just going to go back a little because this is a really 
you know, Srila Sridhar is, for those who aren't familiar with Srila Sridhar she has this style of writing where very, they're like sutras. Srila Sridhar is writing, he writes, it's like he writes in, a sutra means like a, like a deep, profound truth presented in a concise statement. And so Srila Sridhar he talks like that, he writes like that. So like many of these sentences here, it's like two or three lines, but you could spend a few hours discussing them. So I'll just read this last one again. When the Sri Gita teaches us enlightenment through the selfless execution of scripturally ordained actions, when the consciousness is thus purified, self-realization or spiritual realization is attained. In its maturity, this pure realization blossoms into loving service and the joyful divine plane. From the standpoint of Sambandha Gyan, or knowledge of relationship, Sri Gita, Sambandha Gyan means understanding what is what. Um, who is who, what is what, who we are, what's the nature of the environment, etc. So from this standpoint, Gita gives us the conception that the absolute reality is a transcendental personality. From the standpoint of Prayojan or the objective, spiritual love for the absolute reality is given as the highest attainment. And from the standpoint of Abhideya or the means, the path, we are taught that one must initially offer all his actions to the Supreme Lord followed by the cultivation of self-realization favorable to realization of the Lord, and finally surrender to the Lord, to the exclusion of all other endeavors. Ultimately, the means will culminate in the objective when, in one's perfected spiritual form, one wholeheartedly engages in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. I'm going to pause here with this introduction because I don't want to rush through this. Um, um, and, you know, I'd, I'd like to explore some of these thoughts a bit more. Um, but what I would like to do before we go is um, fast forward and let's chant, you know, the first verse um, together. Um, so I, I, think, I think everyone would like to have a bit of a taster of, um, of the 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 text of, of, um, of Bhagavad Gita. So let's put, on, put those thoughts on pause um, and then let's fast forward. So let's go to chapter one, verse one. We'll just, this is just gonna be like a preview for next week. Um, and then, then maybe we can have some, we can touch base with one another here. Okay, so we, we can um, chant this together. Um, you can take your microphone, you can unmute if you'd like. We can maybe try and chant together um, as, as, as you like. Okay. Om Ajnana, I'll just start with a short prayer. Om Ajnana Tmirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakso Nilitanjena, Tazmai Shri Gurave Namaha. So this is chapter one, Sainya Darshan, observing the armies. Dhritarashtra Uvacha. Dharma Kshetche, Kuru Kshetche, Samaveta Yuyutsava, Mamaka Pandavaschaiva, Himakurvata Sanjaya. Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, what happened when my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled for battle at the holy place of Kurukshetra? <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna end on a cl cliff uh, cliffhanger here. You know, what happens when they all assembled in Kurukshetra? Um, and also there there is some background. Um, you know, we don't want to get we don't want to get lost in the context of Bhagavad Gita because, you know, this is a purely spiritual text, and um, and the, and so like the historical context, no, it's it's not it's not actually relevant. Um, however, 
you know, it is it is nice, it is engaging to have some context. Um, so we can do, we can explore that more um, next week um, as we start diving into the text. Um, and uh, and I, I would like to, you know, I, I do want to keep these meetings. Um, I know Chintamni likes it too. We keep these meetings on like on time. We say one hour and we stick to one hour. I'd like to, I like that. Um, then everyone knows like this is going to be a reliable, a reliable slot, you know, one hour slot. Um, so I would like to, we have 15 minutes left and, um, and I would like to just connect with, with everyone here. Hey, come, come to here. <laughs> We have a new friend who's joining us here. So we've just, this is Alicia, new friend. Um, so we've just, we've just been through our segment for today. And now we're going to just touch base with our friends here. And we, I did have a request. Someone was asking if I can introduce myself. Um, so I'll just give a brief self bio. Um, and then I'd like to let, say hello to everyone who's here. Um, so my name's Vishaka. For those who don't know me, my name's Vishaka. Um, and I was born into the Krishna consciousness movement or Gaudiya Vaishnavism. My, my, um, my father is a disciple of Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, the founder of the ISKCON Society. And my mother is a disciple of Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Deva Goswami, um, who's the founder of our like sister mission, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Um, and I'm a disciple of Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, who was the successor of Srila Sridhar Maharaj, and also had a very close relationship, like a son, to Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. Um, so I feel very connected to both of these missions, um, although I am involved actively in this mission of Srila Sridhar Maharaj and Srila Govinda Maharaj, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. Um, and I lived in India for 10 years at our temple um, there in Nabadri, West Bengal. And nowadays I travel a lot, um, meeting with our communities. Um, now I'm here in uh, California and uh, we're kind of on the, we're literally on the road. Um, in, in Luckily we had a friend here where we who host, hosting us. So we have somewhere to, you know, sit down and, put up the phone and <laughs> tune in, give us a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and from here, we're going to um, San Luis Obispo and then Ojai and then Tijuana. Um, so we have a lot of programs. So that's my story. Um, I just want to say hello 